Hello and welcome to That's The Point. My name is Corey Meyer. Sitting here is John Lopez. What's up, John? Hey, man. How you doing? I'm living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> we try our best each and every time out to talk, explain, unpack construction technology here. And this one is a highlighted, underlined, red letter episode um, that we've wanted to do here since day one. And that is we're going to be talking about field collimation with RTS Total Stations. And that's why we brought in a pro. I wouldn't say pro, I would say more experienced. Okay, well, we brought in an experienced hand to guide us through this process. Now, Gian, like HAVA collimation or field collimation can be an awesome capability to ensure that your total station is in good operating condition. Um, it is something that you can do out in the field or at the office, but it gives a little bit of peace of mind um, and it should absolutely be in the layout specialist toolkit. Um, so jumping into it, let's first of all explain like what is field collimation, what is this HAVA collimation, and what does it mean for us with a total station? All right, so an HAVA collimation is you're essentially doing a collimation, so an adjustment in the field. So say that in a particular example that you drop your equipment. So Hypothetically, we would never want that to happen. You set up the equipment and you start taking your shots when you're setting up to your control points and you start noticing that there's like an... Uh, uh, maybe an eighth or a quarter deviation from the days before. You were getting maybe a sixteenth. Now that increased. So th that what you want to do is you want to use this collimation to tighten up the air between the reticle, which is the crosshairs, and to your prism. So essentially another component that the equipment has is a tracker. That's right, because there's two parts it. to every shot, right? There's, there's what you see through the reticle, and then there's the tracker that's actually doing the measurement. It's measure. actually following the prism. It's actually taking all the measurements for that. So what you're really doing is now you're going from taking all these collimation shots to finding out where your prism is, so your tracker, to your actual reticle, so your center of your scope. So what you're doing is you're finding the error or the value, depending if it's to the left or to the right, and the equipment is going to compensate, so it's going to take a note of what that error is and try to always line up that reticle towards the actual tracker, so the center of the glass on that prism. So... Field collimation isn't just a check. It's actually an adjustment. You're actually making a physical you're adjustment to the total station. You're making a physical adjustment. Okay, cool. So you are actually you can actually like alleviate some of your headaches in the field yeah. without having to send it in. You, you can. So you can really notice it any time you're looking through the scope and you're looking onto your prism and say it's a little bit off from right. the prism. You're tightening up that error. Okay, so, so that's the what. So now let's talk about that. And before we get into the how... We need to talk about your setup and some things that you need, some 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 simple things that you need to be able to do a field collimation. Right. So yeah, you need to definitely have your stable base. You need to have two shots. That distance also needs to be about 100 meters, so roughly about 328 feet from your robotic total station to the object. It could be either the corner of a window, it could be the corner of a building. It's using the laser pointer and essentially the EDM, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a prism. It could be anything. They need to be about 15 degrees from each other, so you're gonna shoot a straight line, and then from that it can either be 15 degrees up or 15 degrees below. But as long as you have that requirement of the shots, and as well the distance, you should be fine. Now, some of you might be looking at us like, what is 15 right. degrees? I was so, about to ask that. Well, essentially, if you can actually connect the, your field link software to your, to your robotic total station, and then you can go under your device and turn to menu. And what you're going to do is you can go ahead and find your spot that you're going to start off with. Go ahead and set that to zero HA. And then you can move the instrument up and down manually. And it will automatically give you where 15 degrees should be. So give you a reference. To a kind of reference understand. so you know where you need to be looking at so that you can take your shot. Because 14.9 doesn't work. No. It has to be 15 <laughs> or above. <laughs> okay. Um, and so, John, we're now going to walk through this, and you're going to kind of play by play and get us through the steps. So, All right. So, essentially, we set up right outside of our building. So, we got our equipment leveled out. From there, we're just shooting the very bottom base of the, uh, the actual building. We're shooting the very top of our building. So, that's about 15 degrees away from each other. So, at this point, we would press the enter button all the way to the from very your bubbles, right, right. From your bubbles. And then it will take you to the setup menus, which are inside your face display or for your equipment. So you have the back and forth arrow and the down arrow buttons. The down arrow lets you go down onto the menu, and the back and forth lets you go up and down. So which one, what we want to do right now is we want to press the down arrow all the way down until it goes to the adjustments. It'll be highlighted by a little arrow next to it, and then we'll press the enter button so that we can go inside the adjustment menu. From there, what we want to do is we would press the down arrow until we go all the way down, so it's going to be twice, to where it says HAVA collimation. 
what you'll do from there is press the enter button and it's going to show you the current values which are horizontal angle zero vertical angle zero that's always usually from spec every time either the equipment has, is brand new or it's been came back from the service center after it's, after it's been calibrated. Because you guys zero those out. In the we zero center. those out. And then what you want to do is you would press the enter button, press continue. So it's just going to tell you to aim at a target. We're going to go ahead and do that ourselves in the video. So we turn around, look through the scope and aim it to the very base of our building. What you're going to do is you're going to essentially take five shots to that same spot and making sure that you're actually lead, that you don't move the instrument while you're pressing the enter button. So to start it out, you're going to press the enter button to continue. Like as I said before, it'll say aim to target. We'll do a new observation with the enter button, but you're going to press it a minimum of five times to get the five observations. The whole time we just try to get out of the way and double check as we're going taking the observations that we were looking through the scope. Right, you want to make sure that you're still, you're on still that on as you're hitting that button. If you have a fat finger or you put a little bit too much force, you can accidentally move the equipment, so then you're not really lined up to the same spot, so you could be creating an error. Once we get to five, we'll press the down arrow and go to change face, and then we'll press the enter button, and it'll automatically move the equipment. Now, what you want to do at this point is make sure that you're still in the same spot as you were before it, if it's slightly shifted, go ahead and make the manual adjustments using the knobs on the side of the instrument to line it back up where it should be. And then we'll go ahead and continue the process by pressing the enter button five times and doing make, all and five making observations. Making sure you're locked on though. While we're looking through the scope, making sure we're locked on. Now, once you're done with the five shots on both faces, it'll take you to the current values again, but it'll show you the horizontal angle and the vertical angle. Everything's in decimal feet. So it's saying that there's a 0 0.001, so about a 16th of error in the horizontal angle between face one and face two. At this point, if you wanted to just make the adjustments horizontally, because that's really what all you needed, you would press the down arrow and press store correction. If you need the adjustment on the vertical angle as well, you're going to go ahead and go to the selection where it says trenion collimation, and you'll press the enter button. From there, it'll take you to the same process. Because now we're going to do the 15. So now we're so just we're worried do about the 15 vertical. degrees. We're, we're okay. only worried about the vertical. And it'll tell you to aim at a target. At this point, we would turn the equipment towards that location that we're trying to lock onto. So in our video, we shot the very top of the building. Then from there, we'll go ahead and uh, make sure that we press the down arrow where it says new observation, press the enter button. And then we're going to go ahead and press the new observation while we're looking through the scope to make sure that we're still on the same spot. From there, you'll press the down arrow, change the face again, and then make sure that we are still locked onto the same spot. If not, you're going to do some manual adjustments with the side of the knobs to make sure we're dead on to the same exact spot. And we will press the enter button one more time to start the observations, maintaining that we're looking through the scope, making sure we didn't move as we're pushing on the buttons. Once all five are done, it'll give you the current values for the trunnion, which is your vertical angle. And then all you have to do is press store correction with the enter button all the way to the right. And it should tell you stored successfully. When it says stored successfully, that means that your collimation has been completed. Your all right, so let's talk about the bad stuff. What if it can't store that? <laughs> all right, so there's uh, essentially three things that could have gone wrong. One, you press the buttons and you accidentally move the equipment. So you took the shots and it just calculated incorrectly. So it just says there was too much of a value to calculate. The second one is you didn't have your 15 degrees exactly. It'll say fail to store or say that the shots would never actually happen because you didn't have your 15 degrees. And then the last one is if it just, every time you made sure that you were 15 degrees, you took your shots, the equipment didn't move, is that the equipment it will no longer compensate for the error that it's the outside vertical of the have. range that it can compensate for. Yeah, it's just way outside of that scope where it can compensate for you. So at that point, you'd want to call your local service center and bring in the equipment so they can manually do the, a calibration for the equipment. Okay. Well, I mean, there we have it. So you did it. So you yeah, need like a drink of water or something? That was a Probably lot. a little bit, yeah. I, I had a couple of minutes off there. So. So this is a topic we've wanted to cover from the very beginning. So field collimation can help provide you with some air cover and peace of mind um, to your layout workflow. So John, thanks so much for explaining this process. Yeah, no like a pro. Man. Forget the experience part. Like you're, you're a pro on that. Oh, well, thank you. It means <laughs> a lot. Maybe I can get a pay raise. Yeah, not going to happen. <laughs> um, of course, if you have any questions, reach out to your local Building Point representative and don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all the latest tips, tricks, and pointers. 
And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on That's the Point.